Hi, hello there, Charlotte here. Now we are going to start this painting and you've got your paints ready and your equipment based on the list from the um, previous video. Now, this is a really exciting point for me and it's quite surreal because you know what the finished painting looks like and that's why you're watching this video. But I actually have no idea what I'm going to paint. I've got this idea of a forest and a path and some sunbeams, but once you get to a certain stage of confidence and play with the paint, you can allow yourself to go with the flow and make things up as you go along. And of course, I've got quite a lot of technical background, know-how behind me, which gives me some of that confidence. Um, but this is going to be really exciting just to paint something and take you on the journey with me. Now, I feel like I should sort of apologise that um, there's a lot of big face in this uh, video. But what is really important is for me is that this is a one on one session, essentially, between me and you. And I it feels very important that the canvas obviously takes up most of the filming space but that I'm really teaching you. So this is an experience as if you were with me in the studio and I want to be able to explain things to you. And if there's anything which I want to show you more closely, I will bring the camera right up here. So let's get started. We're going to begin with doing a little bit of background work and just planning out where the shapes are going to be for this painting. What's going to, I'm going to basically map out the, the, the picture, knowing full well that I can alter anything as I go along. And that's what's brilliant about acrylic. One of the many things that you can paint over any mistakes or perceived mistakes. You can keep layering up. So this is, it's a great way to start. And don't forget that if you feel that you're on a tight budget, with paint. For all of these underlayers, you can use cheaper paints that you've got lying around, but do try and avoid paints, especially with blue, which have got white mixed in them. And it's very obvious when you look at them on the, on the rack, you can see which paints have had, which sort of look light blue. Um, because once you've got white mixed into the paint, then the colour matching is going to be very difficult and you're going to get really different results. So you know what this painting looks like when it's finished. And at this stage, if you feel like you want to plan out the areas with pencil beforehand, if you've printed out the finished painting and it gives you a little bit more confidence in the structure by drawing it out with a pencil first, please do absolutely go for it. But I'm trying to encourage you as well to feel like you can do everything just with the paint and just with the brush and not to worry about where the first marks go because we're going to be, the painting is going to evolve as we go along. So let's get started. Now I've got my, my three blobs of primary colour, cadmium red, phthalo blue, cadmium yellow and a good big blob of white. I'm going to start with some background sky. Now I'm thinking that the light is going to be on the right hand side so I want to make sure that I leave that space nice and bright and I've got my 50 number 50 brush which is the five centimeters or two inch brush just pure white going to start up in the corner here nice and smooth all the way across. Now I've taped the sides of the canvas so I don't need to worry about getting paint going over the edges and I'm going to paint the white background. It's relatively thin. I don't want it to be too thick at this stage but I'm going to do this over the top half. So whether you can see any shine on the canvas at the moment which denotes where the paint is or whether it's looking completely matte. The paint is now going about halfway. 
and I want to keep this far right hand corner actually white but the paint just gives a smoother finish over the top of the canvas even though it's been primed with, with gesso and it just helps me in case I want to add something in that top corner while the paint is still wet it makes it much easier. So just getting a little bit of just a very small amount of yellow on there. I'm going to add a little bit of brightness in a yellow circle, keeping one space totally white. So there'll be a real focus of light up in that corner. Just touching the brush into the yellow. See, I'm just picking up tiny little bit smoothing it along i've got baking paper on the tray which just makes it a little bit easier for uh, getting rid of the paint any paint at the end of the day rather than washing it down the sink so a bit of a c shape of yellow emanating out from that circle of white now just getting tiniest little bit of red. So I want the, the background to start getting slightly darker. This is going to be sky, um, a light, the light in the sky that I'm going to see in between the trees. So again, just kind of jiggling the brush into the edge of the, the color. I don't want to be picking up too much paint. And because of the white, we're getting a really soft blend and I'm pressing relatively hard with the brush and just adding in. You can see when you first add it in, you've got a few streaks, but just going back and forth, back and forth with the brush. It just helps to smooth out some of those streaks. And if I wanted to, if you've seen any of my videos before with blending cake mix, so put your brush at 90 degrees into the white and as if you're mixing the cake batter together and then you can go smooth over. So this is background, as I said, I don't want to be too fussy, but I do want to create a gradation of the light as it comes away from that corner. Now I'm going to add in the tiniest little bit of blue, again, just pushing the bristles into the edge of that pile of blue. And I'm going to start on the far left, so just a bit of blue added in there again picking up a little bit going right up to the top of the canvas it doesn't matter if the brush goes over the edge because of the tape now this is quite an interesting blend because as the blue starts to get towards the red we'll get an interesting gray tone mixing together and i don't want the sky to be particularly blue but I want to bring that blue in. Now I'm going to take a little bit more red, just mix it in, a bit of cake mixing through here to start getting a soft gray tone. Because I want the brightness to be on this left-hand side. I don't really want to create too much of a blue sky look. Again, when I put on new paint, cake mix in and take it all the way through. So now we've got a really interesting blend as the sky starts to get a little bit darker towards the, the edge. Now remember that this is your painting. This is your version of the artwork. And if you want to have a really bright blue sky in the background, please do. Absolutely go for it. Now, what I'm thinking of in the foreground, so we've got some sky perhaps popping out in between all the trees that I want to paint. And I'm going to keep going even while that's wet and start putting in a few shapes in the foreground for what might happen with the painting. And remember, of course, you can change as you going along. So here I'm going to take make a little bit of brown. So a bit of red. I'm just going to pull some of the red down on my baking paper. Tiny bit of blue. When you're mixing new colours, always mix at the edge. So a little bit of blue and the red. Because there's white in the brush, I'm getting a grey tone. And now adding in some yellow. 
starts to make it look quite greenish because of the amount of blue, a bit more red. So I'm mixing the three primaries together to create a brown tone, okay? And here, I'm just gonna step back a little bit to see what's happening with the shapes. I want to put in a path and I'm using the flat edge of the brush. These flat brushes are brilliant because you can get quite precise lines, even though they're, they're large, as well as covering a big area with the, um, the width. So I might just create a destination point there and then do a bit of an S shape like this. So I'm just zigzagging back on myself and maybe this path has a couple of turns in it. And here I want to make sure that it's nice and wide. So we feel like we're at the edge of the path so see how here, I'm just again using the side of the brush. It doesn't matter what colors are now mixed in because this is just planning, plotting out all of the shapes, just reinforcing that zigzag. There will be elements of the painting which cover up sections of this path, but this helps to just plan. And stepping back to have a look at the shapes, Great. Okay, now from there, I'm gonna start building in a little bit of forest floor and just again, some general shapes of what's gonna happen in the painting. I want it to be a little bit more green than the brown. So here I take some phthalo blue, just pull that down. Remember how strong blue is. So you only really need a small amount of blue compared to the amount of other colors that you'll be using. So quite a lot of yellow, mixing that in remember to mix into the edge of the blue and see i'm still using this really big brush the fewer brushes you have to wash the better especially with this kind of um, background planning so i'm just mixing in simply the blue and the yellow together there'll be other colors in the brush you can see there's white still in there doesn't matter now i'm thinking that maybe a little bit of a hill up here, so I'm gonna draw with the edge of the brush. I'm covering up a bit of that path. So the path now goes behind the hill, which makes for an interesting direction. And I'm just going to mirror that shape to give me a little bit of a guideline as to where the green is going to go. We notice I haven't used any water yet, and I'm using the pure color where I can, even when it's quite dry because it helps me to control the tone better. When you start adding in water, and I will show you, I will just, I've got some water down here, just dip the brush in the water. For one thing, the water, if you're using the brush quite heavily, it can start to pull the color away and um, really changes the tone. Although it is very useful for getting a fluid covering and filling in all of the, the gaps. So what I'm going to do at this stage, just for that little bit of water, see how I'm really brushing quite hard to fill in all of the little gaps in the canvas. You know, the canvas texture can create wonderful variations of, of white dots and, and light. But here for this background, I'm just, I will just want to fill in. So giving it a good scrub and right up into the hill there. So a coverage which helps me plan and plot certainly what's going to happen here. And I want to have more forest on that side. So again, replenishing the brush with green and here maybe create a little bit of a hill and then feel like I want to take it up a bit higher there so we've got an interesting valley shape. Now obviously as the path gets further away it's going to get really small and narrow so I'm just going to close that gap a little bit and I can change the size of the path as I'm going but this again just helps to plan out where all of the colour, the blocks of colour, are going to be. 
and luckily that sky is still wet so I can scrub quite hard and use that white paint in the sky and don't be too worried about being rough with your brushes if you've got a good quality brush it will take quite a lot of scrubbing and if you find that with your brush some of the bristles come out and you're having to pick them out um, with a with a pin uh, or even kind of using your hand to pull out the bristles that is fine in all of your underlayers but it might start to get frustrating if you're doing a very smooth sky and you have bristles so it is worth investing in a good quality brush which isn't going to shed its bristles even just one so you can see i'm just now building up a sense of the picture of what's going to happen here and so straight away we've got this really interesting diagonal which is taking us across the picture towards that that bright light now still using the same brush i'm still thinking now what do i want to have in this painting and i mentioned earlier that i was thinking about perhaps a forest and it could easily be left as an open landscape here with wonderful hill shapes and and that calmness of the the open space but i i was feeling foresty when i started this so we're going to keep going with the forest idea now using up the paint that i've got here again i'm going to make a, a dark brown so blue red to create my purple and then add yellow in to make first of all it's going to start looking very mucky and green because of the strength of the blue which uh, infuses that whole mix with the blue tone adding a bit more red to create a brown you can keep adding red and yellow to get the kind of brown that you want blue will always make it darker so this is to again just keep on planning out where everything is going in the painting. So I've got this kind of greeny brown tone, add a little bit more red in there. And now I'm just going to step back slightly to have a little look at what's happening here. And trees. Now let's see. I feel like I want to have one right here. <laughs> so sometimes you've just got to make a mark on the painting. Just take that risk. You can always paint over it and I'm going to start by just thinking right nice shape going up into the sky some good foreground perhaps a few smaller ones I'm feeling slightly curvy trees today they're not all straight are they and again because the background is still wet we can get some variation of light and the strength of the paint. Just a few fine trees. I'm just using, see how the brush is starting to split with, with the paint as it dries a little bit? Doesn't matter at all. This, it makes it look even more organic and interesting. Just changing the angle of the brush to get some interesting shapes maybe the forest starts to open out and then we can see this lovely brightness in the sky but on this side oh now this is where it starts to get exciting how much of the path am i going to cover up or is the forest going to be on that side and the uh, this is going to be open grassland no i want to commit to putting some trees in because i can always paint over it if i want to so here let's have a tree right there tree right here just put down its roots straight away and have it snaking all the way across there so we will start to see the path going behind the trees which always makes it quite an interesting journey for the eye all right you see i'm not planning out where these are going but don't forget, I've done a lot of paintings of trees, so I feel quite comfortable committing with the brush as to where, where the shapes are going to go. 
and it's going to be one here. So we can see the path as it vanishes behind the horizon. And I am going to put something right across here. I'm imagining maybe, I'm starting to feel like there could be some light beams, some sun coming through, which would be nice to do. So these trees, I want to bring them a little bit lower down. Nice and thick. I can always paint over anything that I don't like as we get further on. Okay, and this is still very much planning stages. Perhaps I'll leave it like that, but maybe there's one here, just filling in that edge. One of the things that can be really challenging when you're painting is not making things too regimented and uh, creating a pattern. We often want to create patterns and it's really hard to break that. So all of your trees might start being exactly the same distance apart. And when that starts happening, you have to force yourself to make them, you know, the gaps in between these trees are almost exactly the same. So sometimes you just got to force an extra line in to make it look a little bit more organic. So let's just break up some of those spaces. And again, this is just planning out where all of the shapes are going to go. Right, well, we've started to get quite an interesting uh, landscape emerging. And a few more, filling in a few more of the gaps here, just because I've got some of that paint left. And maybe, I'm not quite sure what I want to put there, and don't have to decide just yet. <laughs> we can keep layering over. So I'll just leave a little bit of muddy something or other there, because I put it there. So I'll just add a little bit more. Okay. Now, at this stage, you might want to just step back, have a cup of tea or um, dry it off and we'll get straight on with the next layering of adding in some light. And we're still going to be working very much in background shapes, um, but started to create the, the blocks of light and maybe we will begin with some palette knife. Okay, how's yours looking? I think that's all right for a start.